Now, if you're a car guy like me, I can guarantee that you have very likely considered buying a Volkswagen Golf GTR or you have really owned it. Now, why not? It does everything so well. You can, you know, commute, you can go on grocery shopping, can go on road trips, fetch your family around, and on the weekends, you have the performance to have fun in this car over here. So today, I'm here with the Mark 8 Golf GTI. So I'm gonna do a first drive. It's finally here in Malaysia and it's offered at a fantastic price at 212,000 ringgit. And um, it's a very compelling package. So the question is, is it worth the hype? Should you jump onto the Volkswagen or the bandwagon? Get it? <laughs> and get yourself a Mark 8 Golf GTI or rather upgrade from your previous generation Golf GTI. We'll find out more of that in this episode of Thomas Drives where I take the Mark 8 Golf GTI on its spiritual home onto this nice twisty roads up Gunding Highland. And also, I got a special guest for you. There will be a blast from the past. Yes, today we have what I think is the modern spiritual successor to the Mark 8 Golf GTI. And this is the Mark 5 Golf GTI. We're going to do a back to back comparison on the new and to the old. More on that in this episode of Thomas Drive. Now, if you enjoyed this episode, please help me hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more content like this in the future. And don't forget to hit the bell notification so you get alerts when new videos are up. All right, with that, let's get into some driving. Okay, we have a Golf GDI and some twisty mountain roads. This is the right formula for this car, isn't it? We shall find out as we push this car a little bit more. Alright, so we have a very familiar winning formula in this car over here. MQB platform is still here. What's changed is we have the front uh, subframe which is now aluminium. More rigidity. And same engine EA888, uh, but now 248 horsepower and 370 newton meters of torque. Uh, do you feel it immediately? Not really. Not much of a difference from the from the uh, got to drive defensively. Thank you. Sorry about that. You don't really feel it up front, but what you do feel though and I'm jiving with it, is the new 7-speed DSG. Previously, we had the 6-speed. I always felt that the ratio is a bit... Yeah, I like the, the Golf R's ratio better with the 7-speed. So now you have the 7-speed and the ratios are shorter. Better for spirited driving. Okay, so in the engine department, I mean, it's no surprise, it's good. The EH8 is one of the best 4-cylinders out there. But the sound, the way the sound is being delivered now is very artificial. Yeah, I, I noticed in eco mode, in comfort mode, it's always there, you can't turn it off. So, uh, it's just not really my thing. All right. Put your foot down, it delivers power effortlessly. And I noticed this engine right now, this new triple, uh, this new 2.0 liter from it, it's the new engine is a bit more it likes to play at the top end a little bit more than the previous one like the previous one used to die a little bit at the top end but this one is great all right we've got some corners right now let's go in brakes are nice What makes the new market golf GN super impressive? The way the car manages grip and manages the chassis, it likes to stay very neutral. So, um, in the previous generation, they have the electronic differential, right? The XDS. And what that means is that rather than having a limited stick, an actual mechanical differential, they use the electronic system to brake the front wheels, whichever is going to slip. So it manages that with a little bit of braking, okay? But now, 
is a little bit different. They introduce a new component to the car. How would you like a micromanager watching over you when you're having fun? <laughs> Not very nice, right? That is what the VDS is all about. The new VDS. So now, it not only controls the brakes to give you an electronic differential, it also controls the dampers. And what it tries to do, you can see that, <laughs> is to keep the car as neutral as possible. It, hand, it change the dampers, it varies it to give you a more neutral feeling. Now, is it good? I think this is the, the big improvement from the Mark 7. Now, you notice I hesitated with that. <laughs> there is a very subjective approach to good. It kind of robs away <laughs> your input. It takes away that natural roll. So sometimes I don't know where the grip limit is. It's not, it's not progressive. It kind of robs that progressive feeling. But here's what you get in return. It's easy to drive fast. It's very easy, like you can see, to drive fast and it's so secure. It gives you that assurance to just push it out of the corner. Don't have to worry about slipping. There's, there's no jerking whatsoever. It just bam, you're out. It's here's a little conclusion. It is better than the Mark 7. That's for sure in the handling dynamics. It's easier to push the car. It's easier to extract performance from the car. And that's a good thing in one angle. But on the other angle, if you are a super keen driver, means that you want to get involved with everything. This may not be the best car for you. But I tell you what, it's rapid. And I love how the brakes feel. It's just, it bites so well in the brake. This is, this is, a, I, I love the brakes. Love it. Total response, great as well, intuitive. Steering, accurate. Lovely, very accurate steering. But a little bit numb. Yeah. Oof. That was fun. So there you go. That's a quick uh, spirited drive with the Mark 8 Golf GTR. And I gotta tell you, um, as much as I have my personal preference to driving, I can tell you one thing. It's very well executed. There's not much I can really complain. Um, overall, it's a great package. Yeah, And something I forgot to mention as well, the dual clutch gearbox is amazing as all Volkswagen's DSGs. You're really, really good. So let's do a little quick walk around the car and uh, to see some of the interesting features which I thought uh, is worth sharing um, in this little review over here. Now, of course, um, the exterior is not a stranger to anyone. It's, you know, it's new. You've probably seen the videos around, seen the pictures around. So I'm not going to focus too much on the exterior. Except for one thing though. I wish they had that uh, lights down over here. Kind of makes it a little bit more mean. You know, but I'm sure you can do that with aftermarket stuff. But yeah, honeycomb grill. Um, those two lights in a straight line that goes across that red GTI line. It tells everybody it's a GTI. Um, I do like the new rims design. It kind of takes that very iconic design and just push it a little bit further. Big fan of it. Red calipers. That's great, okay? Let me show you what I really like about the Golf GTI, okay? You see this thing over here? In fact, all the Mark 8s. Uh, I like the fact that it's there. It gives you great visibility. I love how the Golf gives you such great visibility around the car. It's so easy to commute in this car. And that little bit there just gives you a little bit more peripheral vision. As you can see, right over there, it helps you see what's nearby. And how close are you to the wall? How close are you to the next car? It really, really helps. And we're in this very new cabin. Okay, we have this dual layer design. And here we have this, you know, a honeycomb design over here. Right, it's plastic. And this one is the soft touch uh, plastic up over here. Boat quality feels great. At 221,000, I won't complain. It's it's well done. It's well done. 
Now, uh, let's talk about the uh, new instrument dials over here. Now, this is something that I like to show you because it's pretty cool. You can actually adjust it, you know. So by pressing this button over here, you can change the view, right? So you've got the maps, um, you get this very focused, just the speedo, and then um, you have this very cool GTI badging with the honeycomb around it. And of course, this is my favorite. This is the classic two dials over here. So this is what I like. Let me know in the comments which one would you like. Um, but um, the screens look clear. Uh, the dials are not lagging. So that's a great system over here. I like that. And the good news is all of this. Some of you have asked, uh, are this like non-touch sensitive? You know, like you know, when you press it, there's no feedback. There is feedback. So you can hear the, a little click, 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 click sound. So yes, there is feedback. So good news. So you're not going to drive and, and, and touch it by mistake. You have to actually put some pressure on as well. So that is good news. Now, what I don't like around this area is this little flappy pedal. It's, this one feels like a PlayStation button. <laughs> so I, I don't think that's a big issue because you can do mods with that and stuff, right? Um, now this one over here, I'm not quite a big fan of it, of it, but I guess if you're gonna go all clean, then you no, know, you're committing it all the way. So that's fine. You no, know, this is your. Usually you get that knob right for the lights. So now you're going all clean with this. I guess it complements with the whole cabin look. Okay. Now, um, now we have all this iPad looking stuff. Um, you know, infotainment system. I guess this is the way forward. We can't complain about it. This is here to stay. All right. So. Um, the, there are some good and bad news with this and I'll give you the um, good news first the good news is it feels premium it moves nicely it doesn't lag and you know it it's just it just responds very naturally very intuitive I like that very much okay now the bad news however is this buttons over here now I like it that they you know created separate buttons rather than you need to go in the system to adjust the temperature and stuff like that i appreciate that however and just like the buttons over here there is no tactile feeling so when i'm driving i'm trying to change the temperature i there is no tactile feeling to am i actually pressing the button am i actually pressing the button i this is something that i don't quite like i wish they had some sort of clicking button or maybe a vibration or something to let you know that you actually press it because you don't want to look here when you are driving okay you want to watch the road okay now um these things over here same thing right but i do appreciate they separate it so you don't have to enter the system to get it so that's good gearbox uh i don't quite like it let me know in the comments if you like it or not i i just think that a golf a hot hatch needs to have something a bit more rugged which is a gear knob itself yeah um but it's here to stay isn't it you know uh, it does give a cleaner look, but it doesn't speak to the racer boy me. <laughs> but uh, interior is great. You have this very plush sheets, uh, great quality. And again, it doesn't feel anything less than 221,000 ringgit. Um, sound system is acceptable. It's great. So let's get out of this car and uh, jump into something different. So that's the Mark 8 Golf GTI. But today we have also a blast from the past. The Mark 5 Golf GTI. And I believe this is the spiritual father for all the modern Golf GTIs. Because there are a lot of revolutionary technology in this car that put the GTI badge back on the map. I heard, now this is not my first experience, the Mark 3 and the Mark 4 didn't really win a lot of hearts. The Mark 5 did so well in that and people just love this car over here. And uh, till today, even if you drive this car, it does feel so well built, okay? And uh, this is completely stock, so this is a great reference uh, when it comes to comparing it with, let's say, the modern Golf GTIs. Let's talk about some of the revolutionary technologies in this car because it was revolutionary, in my opinion. Now, first of all, we have the aluminum subframe, uh, which is never done before in the Golf GTI and even in this segment. Um, it has also uh, rear independent suspension. No more torsion beam on the Mark 5s. And I believe this is what transformed the characteristic of the car's handling. It's planted. It gives you so much confidence to push the car, right? That's the um, rear independent suspension, right? Pardon my camera. It's getting a little crazy with the glare. I'm going to come over to this side over here. The other two more things that uh, this car did very well 
is uh, the gearbox. DSG dual clutch. In the mid 2000s, they were offering dual clutch gearbox for a family hatchback. That's insane, right? Quite a ballsy move. And I tell you what, uh, it really transforms the character of the car because dual clutch have the, have the ability to put down more power onto the road, from the engine to the road. And that's what makes this car feels so like, it feels ready to go, like so urgent. And of course you have that 1.8 liter turbocharged engine. So turbocharging, dual clutch, aluminium subframe, and multi-link suspension, it's a technological breakthrough. The result, a really fun car to drive, and it's communicative, it's fun, and even by today's standards, this car drives extremely well, it performs, and it's so much fun while being practical, all right? So with that, let's uh, talk a little bit less, and start driving a little bit more. And check this out. <laughs> so right now, we are in the Mark V Golf GTI. And uh, this car has a lot of the winning formula that put GTI back onto the map and it just continues to evolve with the Mark 6, Mark 7, and even the Mark 8. A lot of the winning formula still exists right over in the other car. Okay. And there's so many technological advancements from this car over here, but perhaps in my opinion, the best thing that ever happened for this car is its steering. Now, the steering feels so communicative and in the wet, it still gives you so much information. It tells you when it's about to brake traction and stuff. And it feels like a hydraulic steering would. The only catch is this. It's not a hydraulic steering. It's electronic. And this level of communication for electronic steering some modern cars cannot still do this and they've really done it so well over here. I can't help but to feel though, they don't quite have this dialed in right in the Mark 8. It feels a bit more muted. Well, comes to modern times, you want to add more refinement to the car, you got to remove some of the feedback. Compared to that. But it's chuckable, look at that. <laughs> it's fun, yeah. It's more mechanical. The grip is a lot more mechanical. But this is where the multi-link suspension, the rear independent suspension really gives it that very secure golf feeling over here. It gives you confidence to push around the corner and the back sits in as you apply more G-force. I like that feeling. Yeah. Oh, that was some toxin. A little bit of understeer and see this is the difference between this car and that one over there is that this car doesn't hide its imperfections it lets it be rough be a little bit more rough you know and uh in a way i feel that's more honest as a hot hatch because hot hatch were not refined creatures they were you know the underdog punching above their weight class you know so it's rough around the corner it's like rocky balboa right and the mark 8 kind of moved away from that but i get it you know in today's modern you know uh, car buying scene you gotta need that you gotta need that feeling of wow i've actually upgraded my car you know and uh unfortunately we gotta hit over there and but that is also the thing that makes the Mark 8 so impressive because it actually delivers that in this package, in a hot hatch, right? So I guess this is a change for a good economical and a business sense, right? Jumping back into the Mark 5 was very refreshing. In fact, it is a solid reminder on what was the winning formula of the GTI batch. Now, I feel all of these qualities have been reincarnated in its modern form in a Mark 8 Golf GTI. But I can't help but to feel that in exchange of refinement, it has lost its rough and naughty edge. Now, don't get me wrong, the Mark 8 is mighty fast, way faster, and the performance made more accessible than its predecessors. That is the testimony of engineering brilliance of the Volkswagen brand. But 
This is just my opinion. I think it's not naughty enough for me. But as an overall package, I think it's a brilliant car to have in the garage, especially when it's your only car. And this new refined Mark 8 would definitely win the wallets and the hearts of many Golf GTI owners and I can foresee that many people owning it for many years to come. So if you share the same opinion as me, you like something a little bit more naughty. Maybe the club spot model is something more suitable. So after spending a whole morning with the Mark 8 Golf GTI, what do I think about it? Well, I think it's building on the success, on the winning formula of the Mark 5 Golf GTI. It's very present in this car over here. But the difference is, they have added so much more refinement on the Mark 8, much more than the Mark 7. Um, I think it's a great package, it's easy to access, it's performance, and you know, the whole package makes sense. And with the price of 212000 again, it's such an attractive package. Now the question is, is it worth upgrading from, um, let's say, an older GTI? Well, if you have a Mark 5 and you want to get more involved with your car, um, the Mark 8 doesn't reward you with that much of driving, you know, engagement. Okay, but here's what you really get. You feel much more comfortable. It's nicer on the highway. Uh, it rides the bumps way better. The Mark 8 really elevates the experience of living in this car every single day. Okay, that's what I think about it. With the Mark 7, again, you won't feel much difference of a power, but you do feel a difference in the refinement. And... I think that's the word for it, isn't it? The Mark 8 Golf GTI takes performance hot hatch, something wild and naughty, and made it very refined. And it's still somewhat fun to drive. A little compromise, but I think it's a great package. So that's it for this review of Thomas Drives. If you enjoyed this video, please help me hit the like button. And please don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you want more content like this in the future. Don't forget to turn on the bell notification so you get an alert as well, yeah? And let me know in the comments below, what do you think about the Mark 8 Golf GTI? Its looks, its drive, and stuff like that. Do you plan to get one? I want to hear about it in the comments below, right? With that, I'm going to sign off right now. Thank you guys for watching. Love you guys. As always, stay safe, take care, and uh, keep it 100%. Peace out.